Hey everyone, welcome back to GameMakerCast. It's Mickey, and in this video lesson, we're going to be talking about how to create a switch and hook it up to a door. Uh, I just have a basic game room here with some platformer mechanics. We can jump up and down, we have gravity, and we have some basic collisions. So I've set this room up so that I can add some switches up here and up here, which will open up the doors at the bottom. So the first thing I want to do is create some of the sprites that we're going to be using for these doors. Now you can see we're not going to be doing anything spectacular, so we're just going to stick with the basic colors for now. I'm going to edit this image, and for the door I'm going to choose red, and I'm just going to fill it in here. And I also want to make sure that I name this sprite accordingly, so I'll say SPR door. And finally, let's use a switch, SPR switch. And for the height and width of this, I'm not going to have an aspect ratio, sorry, a ratio. I'm going to use the width of 32 and the height of, let's say, 16. I'll say apply, edit my image, and we're going to have two frames. Let's make these, if our wall is blue, uh, let's just make it green like our player. So the first one will be the uh, full button itself, and then the second one will be the button when it's pressed down. I should say the switch when it's pressed down. So we will just draw a couple lines here at the bottom. Okay, let's put this at the bottom center just so it's easy to add to our room and we'll put this at the, I believe it's bottom right, I'm gonna check this one. Bottom left, okay, so let's put our door at the bottom left. This is just so it's gonna line up nice with our walls that we already have in there. Okay, so let's start by creating an object called OBJ switch. And we want to assign the switch and we're gonna add a create event. In here, we want to make sure that we're not doing any animation. So we could say image speed is equal to zero. And then we're gonna use a Boolean to tell us whether or not this switch has been triggered. We could just say is triggered equals false. And we also need to know the target or the door that this switch is gonna unlock. So we could say target equals no one. And we'll say door to unlock. So we'll just have that in the comments. And one of the other things I like doing is having some debug code in here. So I'm gonna make two variables. I'll say debug on, and I will set that to true. And I'll say debug color. And I'm gonna say make color RGB. Then here I'll use a random value between 0 and 100 for red, a random value between 0 and 255 for green, and then random 100 for blue. Uh, I want to make sure that everything is actually random, so I'll add randomize to the top. Now the next thing I want to do is add a variable through the variable definitions, and we're going to do this so we can access this variable easily in the room editor. I'll bring this down and we're going to add a new variable and I'm going to call this door to open. And we're going to change the type from a real into a string and I'll just set the default to the word actually default. Okay, so now that we're done with that, let's create another event and it will be a step event. And in here we need to figure out or we need to find the door in our room that we're going to be hooking up here. Now we can't do it in the create event because sometimes this object is going to be uh, not created before our door is created. So we can do it in the step event and we could easily extract this out to a script. But for now we can just get away with an if statement. We could say if target equals no one. So meaning that we have not found the target or this is our first time coming in. We could say for of our count equals zero count is less than instance number and here we'll have to create a, another object but we'll say object door count plus plus so we're going to loop through the number of doors that are in our scene let's go ahead and create this object for now we'll just use it as a placeholder we'll come back and we'll edit this all right so back in our code here we're looping through the number of doors that it finds and now we want to grab the instance for the item. So we'll say instance equals instance find. And we're looking for the object door and specifically the count that we're on. So if we find 10 of them, it's going to give us the first one, second, third, and so on and so on. Now we need to make sure that the door name is going to match the door to open. So let's actually add that. 
in our object door, we'll add a variable definition and we want to add a string on here. Whoops. And let's just say name. Okay, so back in here, once we get the instance, we know, sorry, we know we're looking at an object door. So we could say if instance.name equals door to open, well, we know that we have now found the door and we can set the target to this specific door. So we can say target equals instance. And now we don't want to continue looping through any of our doors. So we'll just tell the program to break out of our four and we'll no longer come into this if statement because our target is now set to a door. It's not set to no one. So make sure we save this and we want to add a new event and we're going to add a draw event. And we're just using this for some debugging. We can get rid of this in the end, but for now we want to make sure that we draw ourselves and then we will say if and we want to check to see if our debug is set to true. So we'll say if debug on is equal to true, then we want to run this code. We also want to make sure that target does not equal no one. So we have an assigned target. And if we have an assigned target, then we'll say draw set color. And we're going to set the color to our debug color here that we set up. And then we'll say draw line from our X position and Y position to the target X position and target Y position. And we could just say draw set color back to C underscore white. So if our debug is set to true and we have a target, we're going to draw a line from our current position to that target's X and Y position. Okay, so let's take a quick break from our switch here and let's open up our door and write some code for that. Now, because our door can have multiple states, closed, opening, and open, I'm going to add a new script and I'm just going to call this script SCR state door. And in here, I'm not actually going to call this through the code. I'll just have an enumerator called state door. And in here is going to be our three different positions. We can have a closed position, an opened position, and then we also have an opening position. So this is when the door is being opened, when it's opened, and then finally when it is closed. Now we don't have to call that script anywhere. GameMaker is going to compile that and add it in for us. But what we do need to do is create a step event on our door and we need to assign the initial state. So we'll say state equals state underscore door dot closed. And while we're at it, let's actually assign the door sprite so we don't forget to do that. Now, all we need to do is create a step event to handle our different states. So we could say switch state. So we have three different states. We have a state state door dot closed and we also have a state door opened and finally we have a state door opening well in the closed position we don't really need to do anything we could just say actually we already have a break in there so we can just leave this as is if you had different animations you could make sure your image speed is equal to zero and then you're just basically sticking with that same sprite. When the door is opening, because we're not using animations, I want the door to slide up or be able to slide left or right or even down. I'm going to add two new variables to this variable definition. And the first one, I'm going to call it end position X and end position Y. And these are going to be real values. And what we're going to do is while the door is opening, our x position is going to equal lerp x and position x and I'm going to set it to 0 0.1 so at 10% it's going to move the x position and I'm going to do the exact same thing for the y position so at 10% each frame it's going to move the y position to our end position now all I have to do is a quick check I could say if the x position is equal to end position x and our y position is equal to end position sorry end position y then we know that our door is currently closed or sorry it's currently open we could say state equals door state door dot open 
and then we can break out of that statement. Now, if our state is opened, then all I really want to do is assign our x and y positions. I'll say x equals end position x and y equals end position y. All right, now we have our state machine done. Our door is, I believe, finished here. The only thing we have to do is come back into our switch and we're going to add a collision event. We want to make sure that when we collide with the player, we're going to do a couple things. The first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that triggered is not true. So we could say if the switch has been triggered, then all we want to do is exit out of here. So we're not going to run any collision code. Now, if the switch is not triggered, then we need to make sure that our target is not set to no one. If our target is not set to no one, we know we have a door, so we can say target.state. We just need to change the state of our door, which will be state door dot, and we'll switch it to the opening position. And now, because our sprite here uses two frames, instead of increasing the image speed, all I want to do is say image underscore index equals one. And now I'll say is triggered equals true. Okay, let's close this and let's go to our room editor. In here we have a background and we have the instances. I'm creating a new layer and I'll call this one doors. I want to make sure that I drag it underneath the instances. And the reason to do this is because I want my doors to slide up into something. So I can come in here and let me zoom in a little bit. I'll put a door there. Let's put a door over here and just maximize that a little bit. And so we have one, two, let's create another door right here. And we'll make sure that one's nice and big. Okay. Now on the instances, I mean, I could make a new layer, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to add in a couple switches. So I'll add in a switch there and let's add in another one there. And finally up top. Okay. So if I come back to my doors and I double click on say, whoops, on this door here and I go to variables, you can see we have a bunch of different variables here. What I want to do is overwrite some of these. So when this door opens, I want it to slide over here. So that is going to be an end position of 64 and 448. So let's make sure we edit these to 64 and 448. Okay, I can slide my door back. And the name I'm going to give this door is first door. And I'm actually going to go and double click on this switch here and go to variables and the door to open is going to be first underscore door. Now the other thing that I need to do and I haven't gone over this is inside my door object I'm going to come back over here and just go to parent and I'm going to assign it a solid parent. Now the reason that I'm doing this is if we open up our object player and we take a look at the code we have some collision events in here there's a bunch of other stuff that I'm I'm just not really going to go over in this tutorial, but if you really want something, you can find it, or we can actually make a tutorial for this. But this handles any collision uh, part, specifically anything that collides with object solid. All right, so let me actually save this and run our game to see how we're doing here, see if we have any errors. So it looks like we have our first error. I'm falling through the door, so that is not good. But you can see our debug line is hooked up to the door. Okay, so let me close this and go back to the door and see why this is. And you know what? I set the child to object solid, which it should be the parent to object solid. Okay, let me run again. Now I shouldn't fall through the door. I should be able to walk over it. And if I go to that switch, you can see it goes down and our door slides and now we can come down. So the next thing all I have to do is go back to my room and hook up the rest of these doors. So I could double click again, go to variables, and let's have this door slide up. So again, that's 352 and 704. So we have 352 and 704. And then the name, we'll just give this second. Don't even bother with the word door. Let's move it back down, switch to our switches. 
and inherent variables second to the door and finally this switch let's name this one game maker casts just to show that we can actually put anything we want in here so in this door we'll give the name game maker cast and you know what let's see let's have this one move all the way over here so this position is going to be an x of 992 and a y of 736. Okay, we can close it. And finally, let's move it back here. Now, if we run our game, we should see some debug lines here. We should see our hookups. So we have our switch going down. All right, so everything looks right. So if we jump on this switch, this one will move up. And this one will move to the left. We can come all the way down here and we can't go through this side. So let's jump up here and look at that. Now we can come all the way over here. Well, that pretty much sums it up for this tutorial. I'd like to see how far this can be taken. There's a chance or a possibility you could do it with multiple switches. Um, just thinking kind of off the top of my head, I mean, you could easily just change one of these strings to be a comma separated value and then you could just parse them out so that each one of these is going to have to be uh, triggered before that door is moved anyway hopefully you learned something i'd like to thank you for watching and i hope to see you in the next video thanks again hey everyone just want to say thank you for watching the video tutorial just want to take a few seconds here to talk about my patreon page i'm extremely new to the scene so i don't really expect anything just any little bit helps Right now, there isn't much on there, but if you decide to donate to me, you can get access to the tutorials faster, source code, and a few other goodies. You can find the link below or in the description. Once again, thanks for watching.